Hey, Master Gardeners, here we are at Susquehanna State Park. We're at a spectacular destination here in Hartford County where the Master Gardeners and all people who love gardening and flowers ought to come to see this showy display of bluebells that are all through the two mile walk from the bridge down here at Stafford Road all the way up to the Conowingo Dam. You can view acres and acres and acres of lovely bluebells. Bluebells, well, come on over, take a look. They come in different colors. Can you see the pink ones over there? They're pink shades and there's blue shades. And then as they fade, we have a bumblebee down in here that's visiting. It takes a long tongued bee to pollinate. You can see there's, and actually butterflies are drawn to them too. It takes a long tongued bee to be able to get the nectar and to get the pollen out of these. And so look, he's kind of, I don't know if you can see, he's hovering, oh, here comes another bumblebee inside. So it's a fascinating flower in that respect that it requires these long tongued bees to visit. But this is a flower that's native, Mertensia virginica, native to the whole East Coast, all the way out to the Mississippi and all the way up through Canada. So it's in the Borage family. And if you know anything about the Borage family, it's the forget-me-not families. And they have a lot of what are called anthocyanins. If we look in at this, I see you're looking at the bee over there, but look at these pretty little flowers. See how they're kind of pinkish? and blue as they develop. These are anthocyanins, which is a pigment inside of plants, and that causes that purplish color. Even when this plant is at its green early stages of development, you'll see the juvenile foliage is very deep in the purple color. So the pink and the purple, are, they think could be indicators to the bees that there's nectar and pollen available. And then when the flowers turn more of the blues and the other sky blue colors, then that's an indication to the bees and things that it's not really a good source. We're kind of depleted over here of our nectar sources. But what a spectacular show, perfect for your gardens for use in like naturalizing gardens. But as you can tell, this is a floodplain area, not something that's so easy to duplicate in your backyard, but it needs moist, organic matter type of soil. They sow seeds, so they come back, but they are perennial. Did I tell you? They're spring ephemeral. Do you know what a spring ephemeral is? Come on over, we'll walk down this path where it gets even prettier. A spring ephemeral are the plants that come out in the early spring before the leaves on the trees are out, so they can capture as much sun as possible in their blooming period. So just take a view across here. It goes for acres back into the woods, acres of meadows to the right and the left. You really need to come and, and do a visit here. But they make seeds, but they're perennial with a deep tap root. So it's not exactly a plant that's gonna be a good one to dig and carry to your house. It's one that you're gonna purchase at a garden center more likely, and then bring it here and, and start it in your garden. Or you can start seeds. They can be propagated both ways, by division or by seed, but a beautiful flower the problem with it in the garden is if it's a spring ephemeral, you're gonna to have to make sure you put a plant label on it because it's hard to find it after it dies back in the month of July. So you're gonna to have to mark it in your garden. They say that you can plant different kinds of annuals that are shallow rooted over top of them so that they don't interrupt the root systems too much. But that's one of the hardest things is to be able to find it. It has different common names. It's called cow slip and then it's also called lungwort oyster leaf. So lots of different common names. And it is kind of endangered at this point because there's not too many of these habitats that are as available because of the floodplain and the way that we want to regulate our water overflow of rivers nowadays. So some of this habitat is in decline. So I encourage you to give it a try. Try planting these lovely Virginia bluebells in your yard. And not only Virginia bluebells here, but we've got, there's Dutchman's breeches on the hillsides over here and some white trilliums. So worth coming to see at Susquehanna State Park. See you here.